no, Chicago, this, this, born and raised. Chicago, tell us about that. I was born on uh, a, a summery June day and um, was raised kind of on the north side and the south side. I spent half the time with my parents, half the time with my grandparents because they worked a lot. Um, left the house early. <laughs> I will just say that. And I found myself in the heart of the west side where I linked up with a bunch of people that call themselves burners. They light themselves on fire, Nick. So naturally being the fiery broad that I am, I got into spinning fire. I got into the rave scene, which is coincided naturally. with the community. And naturally. from the age of 14 and up, I helped produce, promote, and entertain in the Chicago rave scene. After my own <laughs> heart, I found like the beauty of the King community. You find people, it's the connections that we make. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with all respect, every ounce of respect you have, love, devotion. Let's celebrate the work of the magnificent Daisy Chains. Daisy Chains, say hello. Hello, everyone. So please tell us what's inspiring you these days. What uh, Leather, leather, latex and vinyl. I got my first latex dress from one of my slaves the other day and I wore it to Kinkfest, which is um, the Kinkfest hosts the world's largest indoor BDSM dungeon, and it is the world's largest indoor BDSM festival. It's up in the Pacific Northwest. We were there last weekend, and we put together 57,000 square feet of play space, along with a very extensive medical area. We have so much to talk about. I could see people getting excited about it already. Okay, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about medical play. We're going to talk about events we're going to talk about um this king festival we're going to talk about the essence the rave scene it plays a part in this because it's all part of the energy of the king community right they are all connected getting people to, getting people together and definitely oh we're going to talk about some of the favorite ladies of your kinky friends the ladies of pep love <laughs> ladies and gentlemen daisy chains it's awesome so let's let's go to the comments already Dan Vladimir, evening, Miss Daisy Chains. PD. Hey there, Sam. Greetings, Daisy Chains. I humbly bow down at your feet and welcome you. Thank you, PD. Everybody, please go to this website, campsite.bio backslash hoopsie daisy chai, C H I for Chai Town. And also go to Locked in Lust and with code YKF, you get 15% off. Yes, we have a sponsor. Locked in Lust. Lock them up. I'm in chastity now. <laughs> Anyway, all men should be caged. Back. That's what I always say. Oh, all men should be caged. Let's just go right into that. All right, fine. <laughs> Chastity. So people call you up. You're you're at Pep Love. People call you up and they they say, um, "Please, Daisy Chains, lock me up in Chastity. I want to be your slave." What do you tell them? First, you tell them to calm down. You say, "Calm it down." But what do you tell them next? I usually don't tell them to calm down. I just jingle my keys and locks that I keep right behind my chair here. <laughs> they tend to get too choked up to say anything next. And before we begin, I must address your magnificent outfit. Oh, you are you. wearing, please tell us what you're wearing for those who can. I am wearing a vinyl dress made by Beatniks Chicago. It is a local sex work owned company, sex worker owned company, staffed and owned by some of Chicago's best. Chicago, I love Chicago. Every time I go to Chicago, I have a good time. Not only on business, on the rave scene for pleasure. There's a, there's a, there's a romance to Chicago, I think. You know what there I mean? Definitely. It, and there's also a grittiness to it as well. I mean, the murder yeah. is high. <laughs> you, know, but, you know, so, but what do you love about Chicago? I'm about to leave Chicago, actually, for the second time. I'm relocating my business. I'm going to Portland, Oregon. And I keep telling myself, ship yourself Jardinera, ship yourself Jardinera. They don't have any Jardinera in the Pacific Northwest. And that's going to be a little bit of a problem. But besides that, I love the melting of all the different cultures. 
you go to the different neighborhoods and you've got like little India, little Italy, little Korea, Chinatown, uh, uh, Ukrainian village where you've got all the European delis. Chicago is so culturally rich and we have the best food in the world because of that. <laughs> have you had New York pizza? I have, and it wasn't it wasn't all that. I thought it was real greasy. I did the fold. It wasn't. It takes all types. Um, yeah, but you're going to Portland. What is taking you to Portland? Portland is a, a magnificent city as well. Of course, I'm biased because I know people in Portland. Uh, shout out to Natasha Strange um, and all them and um, Portlandia, that whole crew. But what is it? Now, you from Chicago going to Portland, that seems like a beautiful mixture. That seems yeah. like fate or chemistry. What is going on? Why are you moving to Portland? So for a while in Chicago, I was hosting uh, tastings, basically tastings with education events as well to the kink community as private events. The pandemic unfortunately shut that down and my business partner and I separated. I have been solo practicing and I'm going to move to Portland and link up with some of my best friends. God is Vivian De La Cour is out there. She also works for Pep. That is my best friend in the whole world. And Molly Morlove, my other best friend in the whole world. We are going to get together and uh, see what shenanigans we can get into. We've talked about renting a dungeon space, building a dungeon. We've talked about creating some sort of program or platform or maybe even a college for sex workers to financially literate themselves, to gain the business know-how that they will need in order to successfully practice and uh i'm just i'm really excited to get out there and explore the mountains i've spent my whole life cooped up in a concrete jungle <laughs> what's beautiful what beautiful about um about there that there is um the energy the energy so you going out there to create some kind of college for kinksters or college for sex workers is just having that thought that energy and the people around it connecting is a magnificent beautiful thing i like to see it in motion it's so awesome of course we get questions like this pd do you own personal slaves mistress of if course. you do what are the tasks and rituals <laughs> they have to perform of course i have one slave that is in charge of retweeting all of my social media I have another slave that is my lovely toilet. I call him my piss baby. I have a slave that cleans my home. I have a slave that pays the bills. <laughs> if you're interested, check out my sites. Let's talk about Pep and meeting these and meeting people. So going to Portland, meeting Pep and um, Pep has this energy too. Everyone at Sarah Miles, love Sarah Miles. Vivian's amazing. Shout out to Giselle. Um, the entire just, oh, team is just full of The entire team are women. magnificent. So how did you actually meet them? And what was, and you're doing other things. You do millions of other things in this in the, in the King community. Um, I really connected you through Pep because I, I'm friends with them. Um, how did you meet them? So I met Goddess Viv online, actually on Facebook. And we were both, advertising in the same online communities i had eventually came to come to own one of these mega groups basically a, a mega sex working group on facebook it's called the taco truck check it out <laughs> and um goddess viv was like oh you're you're teaching kink and bdsm too i said yeah this is what i'm doing do you do you want to see my curriculum and she said well i'm teaching classes too do you do you want to trade lesson plans so we did and that was that one thing led to another. I was like, your mind is absolutely brilliant. Let's be besties. They are, they're, they're pretty magnificent at that. Uh, Stan, Vladimir, Stan is the, Stan is the man. He helps. He, he did your banner and everything. Wonderful friend. Thank he you, asks, Stan. when it comes to medical play, which part and what type do you enjoy the most? One of my favorite kinks among all channels of BDSM, the psychological terror. I love being so cute and so terrifying at the same time. <laughs> as far as is with medical play, I love sharps. I love sharps. I love knives. I love needles. I'm covered in tattoos and piercings. <laughs> I personally love this quote 
which I'm going to use because I collect quotes throughout the, the show. I like being so cute and terrifying at the same time. That really sums it up. That's wonderful. All right. So uh, let's get back to phone sex. Someone yeah, asked a philosophical, a philosophical question about phone sex. We'll talk about a medical play. We'll get back to it. Trust me. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk about talking about phones, about medical play is a whole nother thing. We'll get to that. Are people not talking enough these days or are they talking too much? I feel like I get a considerable amount of callers where I really have to do all of the legwork in the fantasy. I have, to, I have to almost pull it out of them like I'm extracting teeth. <laughs> Others, they'll call me and they'll go, I just want you to listen to this. I got to process it. And they ramble. And I'm like, that's cool, too. I'm, I'm not here to yuck anyone's yum. I'm here to take it in. If you want me to partake in play, we can do that, too. All right. How would you describe the art? phone sex because there is an art to it there's an art to the conversation there's an art especially to romantic conversation and sex conversation and mixing the both so how would you describe your artistic approach to it the phone is the canvas and my tongue is the paintbrush i am there to taste every little crevice of their mind and then spit that back out to them into something that is beautiful i take everything that they tell me and I fabricate this narrative where we are both playing together. And the ultimate goal is to help them expand their mind. Because I know that there's something they're not telling me. There always is. I'm going to find out what it is. How do you find out over the phone when someone's not telling you something? I can be very compelling. <laughs> can you give me an example of that? Yeah, so uh, last week I had somebody that was doing electro play with me, and I joke about having a cattle prodder. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah, may, that, that's... it may or may not be a taser. Someone <laughs> who isn't me might have gotten it. And uh, I got real quiet, and I waited, I waited for there to be a lull in the conversation, and I heard him take a little gasp. And then I hit the taser really quick. And he goes, oh, my God. And then it all came out. <laughs> Okay. Um, it went back to Stan with medical play. He's talking about what parts you enjoy the most. You were talking about psychological terror. Now, um, as someone who's going through the liver transplant, I know what it's like to be terror terrorized by uh, the nurses, the staff. Even if it's just the drugs, thinking that they're I'm, they're going to kill me, making them making even if it's drugs, making me think that the nurse is going to kill me, it's still terror. Still terror nonetheless. How do you use that on the phone? How do you do medical play over the phone? So sometimes I'll do checkups with people. I have one client that will call me for checkups almost on a regular basis. I hope he doesn't miss me too much during my break. But I will have a, a kit of metal tools. And I'll make it sound like, a, like an ASMR session. Like you can hear the medical tools. And you can hear me you know, readjust my outfit. Maybe put on some gloves. Sometimes I'll move my hair out of the way, rustle my hair, make it sound like I'm rustling their hair. There's a lot of little things you can incorporate in, but it all kind of falls under ASMR and cinematic soundography. <laughs> <laughs> PD has a question. Oh, I'm going to ask it. Don't worry. I'm going to make you wait, though, um, because Daisy Chains is, is sadistic sometimes, correct? You could be sadistic. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let's talk about sadism a little bit while PD waits and you're being sadistic. Um, what is one of the most sadistic things that you've witnessed or done recently? That I've witnessed or done recently. Canning the bottom of the feet always hurts a lot. I haven't done Astonado. that. Astonado. <laughs> <laughs> I did see, oh, at Kinkfest, I want to do this. I saw three subs lined up in a row, and the Dom took little, uh, what are those, clothespins, put the clothespins all over the body and made a beautiful weave in between each body and pulled them up in two different hard, hard points from the center. I want to do that so bad. All right. Okay, let's get back to phone sex. What word or phrase should never be used? during phone sex. Ew. 
Unless you have somebody that wants degradation, humiliation, and that specific type, you never say ew. You don't kink shame. That's true. Good point. Good point. Now, PD. PD has this question. I want to... Goddess, I'm very much intrigued by toilet slavery. I'm in thrilled that you own a toilet slave. He's thrilled. There's an exclamation point. How often do you feed your slave your nectar and caviar? Can you please share some unique experiences? And keep in mind where we are where are we broadcasting. Keep it in mind where we broadcast from. Uh, as often as he's available, he does have a very tight schedule. So I haven't seen him in about seven or eight months. Should be seeing him again soon. And the most unique experience. I don't know if it's unique because anybody that has a toilet slave knows how convenient it can be to have one on the road. But. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are you ever traveling and I was like, damn it. You know what really I, this road trip needs a toilet slave, you know? <laughs> yeah. I can see the convenience of having a toilet slave on the go. Yeah. It's, it's very uh... eco-friendly. PD says, I'm happy to wait. Goddess commands, I will wait on my knees as well. Good. <laughs> Good. All right. Um, what word or phrase should ever be talked? Um, what do you do? What do you do when they're too talkative? Because I talk way too much. If they're too talkative, I, I'll, I'll straight up ask them, do you want me to sit back and soak in this fantasy? Would you like to vent to your goddess sometimes i play the mommy role and sometimes it, that's just kind of having having little ones confess to mommy and having mommy tell them it's okay sweetie everything's okay you're validated in those feelings but uh if if they're more of a slave or they're more into cbt and sadism i will tell them to shut up or i will make them shut up and i'll tell them exactly how i will make them shut up glances at toys <laughs> <laughs> So with all these, as we can, I want to continue into this mommy dom thing, especially the sissification aspect. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about diapers and stuff like that. Um, but as you know, doing what you do, you're surrounded by kink. Almost every kink you could think of. I am too. Like it just, you almost there's almost too much and not enough at the same time. Almost right. Um, personally, these days, what's really doing it for you something that's like would you say your kind of fetish is you know boot worship boot really? worship having oh my gosh i have these latex thigh highs i'm i'm a shoe whore nick i have so many pairs of shoes you're a shoe whore you're I a am. shoe whore aren't you <laughs> i have two closets of shoes <laughs> okay let's talk about shoes let's talk about shoes what is it about shoes that you love? I love platform heels because I'm not so vertically endowed. Surprise, tiny dom. <laughs> so I like hey, big platforms that make me look tall. Powerful, powerful things come in small packages. So <laughs> concentrated. Concentrated, right? Uh, <laughs> so there's um Okay, so you like the platform shoes. What about what are some shoes or boots that look amazing that you like that strike a chord in you but are just completely unpractical? Unpractical? I can argue that I could run a mile on those latex thigh highs. Sometimes though, I've got very really? thick thighs, Nick, and you know what? My thighs will stick together because of the latex, and I have tripped before because of that. So besides that, I wear a lot of com combat boots though in the day to day. I love leather combat boots. Yeah, and there's a, a feeling of authority in them yes. as well. You walk around, you walk around contact uh, con <laughs> combat boots. No one's fucking with you unless they're wearing combat boots too. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. Um, Sunshine says, "Welcome, Daisy Chains. I love being so cute and terrifying at the same time. A brilliant technique." <laughs> I. Sunshine employs that technique as well. <laughs> PD, I will happily wait. Oh, he did that. Okay. Dan Vladimir says, how is does this scenario for medical play sound to you? 
You're the head doctor at a male vet clinic where all the doms send their subs for you to check if they're healthy need if they're healthy need or need re rehabilitation. So how does that sound to you, Stan S? <laughs> how does that sound to me? It sounds like a lot of them are coming for castrations to get fixed, yes? Mm-hmm. Maybe. I can help with that. All right. So, <laughs> so you you started, you know, doming, and you found a kind of calling in the mommy dom sissifications thing, right? Yes. Personally, I love the sissification narrative. I understand it's a narrative. I understand it's role play. I don't live it twenty four seven, but kink. A lot of kink is about fantasy. You know what I mean? A lot of these adult babies don't live it twenty four seven. It's a fantasy. They do it, you know, whatever. So specifically when it comes to, to being the mommy dom, it's a little different than it being a typical, stereotypical dominatrix. How would you say it's different and what are some of the misconceptions about it? Common misconceptions, I'm gonna start with that. I think common misconceptions with being a mommy dom is that I just wipe the ass and deal with adult babies all day. I don't. <laughs> I actually dabble very minimally with littles and subs that are in diapers. Um, most of my subs are middles or caught in that that teenage mindset and they didn't get a chance to be soft when they were growing up you know they had parents that were up man yeah. up be a man boys don't cry and <laughs> I, I took a sissification and gender affirmation classes last week with lady v in portland and she had said when you look at men's fabrics we don't allow them to be soft they have denim they have corduroy, they have flannel, and women have silk, lace, fur, satin. I'm just allowing these guys a place to be soft. True, very wise words. And shout out to Lady V, um, and shout out to all of Portland, or oh, everybody. Um, okay, we have some. Yay for tiny doms, Sunshine says. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sissification narrative. Throughout the years, my view on the sissification narrative has changed, you know, quite a bit. Um, obviously, there's the impulsive nature in the beginning of like, oh, yes, it feels good, soft. The, the fabric is soft or whatever. Then there's the mental aspect, you know, the emotional aspect. Then there's like the society aspect, the gender aspect, the, you know, just all these things kind of thrown into the mix. And my outlook of it has grown and evolved over the years. Would you say yours has over the years with your experience and how has it yeah. changed? Absolutely. Absolutely. I was raised in a household where men didn't cry. So allowing myself. Oh, I cry. <laughs> to almost cry justify myself, Proud. you know? Because I, I was raised very tomboy, very butch, very, well, your brothers need you to be tough. So well, I'm the girl of the family, but okay. So allowing myself now as an adult, as, as an adult woman, to almost sissify myself while I'm sissifying a lot of my subs has been really, really healing. Like that the pink dress, the pink latex dress I wore at the event last week, that was the first time I've worn pink in public, probably ever. Well, since I was a little girl. For those, for those who have a misconception of of doming, of you know, especially when it comes to sissification, you know, because it's a lot of attentions made to the sissies. The sissies mm -hmm. are needy. Many are needy. I played the role myself. I needed a lot of attention. I'm very sissy. I'm very you know needy myself in certain ways. I I, I admit it. You know what I mean? It's part of the role play. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> how do you deal with that how do you deal how do you deal with that yeah so being a mommy dom is very much so about nurturing loving nurturing teaching your littles how to set boundaries for themselves how to advocate for themselves instilling a confidence in them that they didn't get when they were younger and Stan asks the stand question if you could have any superpower what would it be and how would you use it in your king club teleportation i'm going to every orgy and every munch out there baby <laughs> yeah i like that definitely um i'm gonna okay. squirt on the top of every mountain come on <laughs> <laughs>
I'm, that's, that's a new quote too. I'm going to throw <laughs> on the top of every mountain. 25 minutes. <laughs> 24 minutes. <laughs> so if you're making clips, do it. Make it a meme, people. I am. Uh, I am just... making clips. So <laughs> they... <laughs> I offer those short videos on mountains. <laughs> Definitely. So, okay, with, with the mommy dom, some people get very turned off with the whole incense incest narrative that plays in it. Sometimes people play with it. Some people don't. Many people just argue it's all role play. Some of it, some of it are triggered by it. What is your role? Do you use that as role play? Do you use incest in it? Do you are you against it? Do you how how do you not use it, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I use incest in my role play sometimes. If that's what the client wants, that's what we're gonna do. It doesn't gross me out. Um, I grew up in a pretty pretty stable household. I know that it's fantasy. I can. I can deter the difference between what is fantasy and reality very, very well. That is my responsibility as the domina. So I know going in that it's not real. I know that I'm not literally this person's mother. They didn't actually come out of my vagine. That being said, if they want to role play like they did, okay. <laughs> so basically making things okay. A voice is very powerful, very comforting. So can you say these things in the most comforting, sexy way, please? Yeah. I'm gonna write a sentence, I'm gonna, okay? I'm gonna put it on the screen. The sillier, the better, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get weird with it. <laughs> Oh, I spelled that wrong. Hold on. Okay. All right. Go. <laughs> the basement is flooded, and we're going to need a new furnace. <laughs> Could I borrow a spatula? These are very silly. <laughs> There's one more, hold on. Okay. Oh, I spelled it wrong. I mean, I, I could figure that out. We were changing a tire and we lost all the nuts. You know, I think that tire will be changed eventually. There's people watching okay. this like, I got a nut right here, Daisy Chains. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> How does that? So one of the, with mommy doms, right? One thing I noticed with the mommy dom um, is with littles or, or, or the subs who, you know, very sensitive. So there's that line of what is abusive and what is not, especially when BDSM comes to play, because a lot of BDSM play, even if it is nurturing and loving, sometimes sometimes butts are smacked, right? <laughs> sometimes faces are slapped. Sometimes there's there's like, you know, uh, sharp implements and stuff like that. Straight up torture. So how do you walk that fine line between what is perceived as abuse and what is perceived as loved in the mommy dom space? The main thing when it comes to any BDSM scene you do is negotiation prior to scene. And when it comes to the scene itself, you may renegotiate in the sense that you may take things away from the scene. You may not add new things to the scene that you have not pre-discussed because both parties need to know exactly what they're getting into going into it. Now, when it comes to phone sex, I might not know exactly all of the proclivities, of the particular client I'm speaking to, but I will ask what their hard limits are, things that give them the ick, things they just don't like, names they don't want me to call them. That way I know what boundaries I have to work with them. Okay, we have a question here um, for all the cross-dressers are asking this for you. Classic French maid or dirty slut? Oh, I love them both. <laughs> I like slutty French maids though. So I guess dirty slut 
because I solidify all my French maids. I like to put them in body stockings underneath the dress. And wow. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, go to lockedinlust.com. You get 15% off with YKF. And let's let's talk more about chastity. First of all, do you have anybody in chastity right now? Uh I did a couple of days ago, but he's got he's got a he's got a work detail right now, so it's not really safe for him to be wearing that under the uniform. Okay. Yeah. There's metal detectors, right? There's metal there's um, I don't know if the airport people have to travel. There's mm -hmm. um, I'm actually yeah. Sorry to interrupt. I'm looking for a chastity device that can be worn long term. So if anybody watching this has any recommendations for a long term chastity device that doesn't cause any weight to be bared underneath the testicles or cause any pain in the groin. And I'm talking long wear, heavy lifting, sleeping, yeah. showering, you name it. Yeah, the, the, the Locked and Lust have some. Uh, Locked and Lust definitely has some. I also highly recommend going custom. Um, I like to think it, the words of Chastity Queen. Chastity Queen is a friend of the show. She has countless numbers of lo of cocks locked and a big necklace <laughs> of oh, keys all around her. Her saying, and it's a, it's a saying that rings true, the best chastity device is the one that fits. With that being said, silicone, plastic, or metal is your all-time favorite? For long wear silicone for safety, but I love the way metal looks. It just looks so clean and medical almost. I love that. <clears throat> so when they call up when they call you up, how do you do chastity play over the phone? Like what, I mean, I know you just you shake the keys, you do that stuff, but like yeah. their chastity play is basically based on long term play. It's an ongoing thing. It's not just you don't do chastity play for like five minutes. That's no. not really the fun. No, no, it's not. So how do you do it over the phone? Some of my clients have me in cahoots with their partners or their doms back in their local areas because I'm in Chicago and not everybody that calls me is in Chicago. So I'm in cahoots with a lot of other sex workers and spouses and partners to help keep them locked and make sure that they are maintaining being locked. Uh, sometimes I'll say, you know what? You were kind of bratty today. I want you to lock yourself up and you don't get to unlock yourself until you can call me next. And they'll go, God, it's Daisy. I can't afford to call you until next week. And also, that's not my problem now, is it? That's your problem. And you brought this upon yourself. <laughs> Why do you think people or men like to have their cocks locked up in chastity? Because it feels safe. It feels secure. Not to get too cerebral with it but I do have a background in psychology and sociology. Please tell us. Particularly that. a lot of cis het men that I see will have the whole uh, internalized shame. Oh, men are, men are so bad, men this, men that. I got to be locked up for my own good and the good of society. And I'll say, yeah, you do. You do. All men need to be locked up for the good of society. And with that being said, uh, what's the longest you had someone locked up? Three months. Three months. And people get the frenzy. Daisy. Yeah. Oh, Daisy. Daisy. Stigmatized. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is the lamest excuse someone tried? They really genuinely tried. Like, for example, when I was a pharmacy technician, People ran out of scripts. They'd bake cookies. They would try. They'd offer to like to change my oil and my car and stuff like that. I couldn't do anything, but they would try. They would say anything and do anything to get unlocked. Has anything said or done? Has anybody said or done anything that we were like, damn? Um, I'm trying to think. I get a I get a lot of begging. I love begging. I love hearing them beg, though. So I'll just let them beg and beg and beg and beg and beg, and I'll I'll mock them while they beg. <laughs> What's a great thing to say to somebody when they're begging? A great thing to say to someone when they're begging. Do you want some wine? No. Do you want some crackers with that wine? Do you want some cheese with that wine? There we go. 
<laughs> you want some cheese and crackers with that wine. And then sometimes I'll, I'll just crack a bottle. And I'll... <laughs> nice. We have some more questions. Rogue three just says sexy voice and way of laughing. Thank you. I spend a lot of time laughing. That's important. Seriously, not just laughing, but just laughing with other people, not at other people, but with other people. It's a beautiful thing. Let's just take a moment to reflect on that. Hi, Mistress Gary123 says, do you like barefoot ball bas busting? I love barefoot ball busting. That's probably okay. one of my favorites. Okay. When it comes to chastity play, Stan Vladimir asks, which one is more healthy and hygienic? I think that depends on personal hygiene practices. All of my subs, I like to take care of my things. All of my subs and all of my slaves, very, very clean. Sometimes I show them how to wash themselves just to make sure that it's done up to my standards. Um, hmm. I think metal, as long as you're, you're air drying it appropriately. I like to use, uh, <laughs> I've got a lash fan and I make all my slaves buy the same lash fan so they can dry in between all of the bars and whatnot and make sure every, you know, we don't want any chafing. We don't want any sores, none of that. But metal is not yeah. for us. So. All right. Now, okay, we get the abuse. We did sadism, sissification, all that stuff. Garters, garter belts, four, six, or eight? Four. I hate, I hate latching garter belts. I love the way they look. Hate putting them on. If somebody wants to put them on me, go ahead. Now you you know you're known for something that you call accessible kink. Please explain what is what's that all about. <laughs> so prior to <laughs> prior to becoming a full time sex worker, I work in the special education industry. I like to say that kink should be made for everyone. Kink is for everyone. Orgasms are for everyone. If they can consent, they can come. So I'd like to make BDSM and kink a little bit more accessible to those people that might have been gatekept or blackballed from entering those spaces because of other pre-misconceptions that maybe those people in charge of those spaces had. Those are wise words. If they can consent, <laughs> they can orgasms come. are for everyone. Yeah, if they consent, they can come. Orgasms are for everyone. Um, and I'm noticing that. One of the reasons I, I'm doing this show is to help other sex workers and people who are just feel that their sexual exp sexual expression is being silenced so therefore they can't make money they can't survive they can't and if you can't express yourself you don't feel alive you're not alive exactly. you're not living so people like you who are doing this or getting people together or trying to educate people on the reality of it of things but also not make it stigmatized make it more human because we are human and i cannot applaud you enough thank you very much daisy james for just being cool tell us about kinkify tell us all about it let's talk about events oh kink fest yes kink fest or okay. you, yes kink. kink fest is it was amazing it was this uh bdsm kink festival that i just got back from in portland oregon they host it every year annually. It is the world's largest BDSM fest. Like I said, we put together 57,000 square feet of dungeon space. That's wooden trellises, metal A-frame, shibari rigs, uh, wrestling mats, gynecological tables, bishop's chairs, St. Andrew's crosses. There was a, a whip alley, which was all fenced in so nobody could get injured on the outside of it. It was, it was something else. They had a little play space and a little petting zoo. So people that were into pet play could go and get pet by the littles. It was the cutest fucking thing. Like, oh, pardon me. Knew that, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. So what makes, you've been, you've been a leader in um, someone who, who gets people together and is trying to help other sex workers and people in the kink community and stuff like that. What would you say makes a good event? Like you're thrown at an event, what needs to be done? What makes a good event in your eyes? There needs to be a team of people that are all in charge of different sections and different departments of the event. There needs to be somebody on sanitation, somebody on first aid and safety, somebody on security, 
and and not just one person, but a team of people, and then someone in charge of that team. Open communication in between each teams is absolutely vital. Good sir. And we need more events. Seriously, people out there, you're kinky out there. Throw an event. No one's gonna do it but you. Simple as that, right? There would be no there wouldn't be Woodstock if people didn't want to have an event. Okay, let's go. Exactly. What else? All right, Stan Vladimir asked a very important question, a very important question. That's very close to my heart. What type of music do you like to use in sessions and for aftercare? For in sessions, oh gosh, I love all types of music. I will not play happy hardcore, even if requested though. I have to say that right now. I will not play happy hardcore or country. Pretty much anything else is on the table. I I really love old school Depeche Mode. <laughs> I was an emo kid growing up. So anything with a heavy bass line, some heavy drums, I'm like, now, now this is sexy. And then for aftercare, I like to play what their favorite chill music is. Because that's good. still their space and their time. So you're not like bumping new Beyonce country album in your sessions nope. these days? Nope. <laughs> Depeche Mode, you struck a nerve. We just did a show recently. Shout out to the magnificent Nico Noir and also the Commandant. We did a show called Depeche Mode for Dungeons. So it's an, it's an hour and a half, maybe two hours show. And we break down the whole Depeche Mode discography and why the, every Depeche, every dungeon should have Depeche Mode, at least like there on standby. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we go into detail why, what song is best to flog to, what song is best to spank, to, you know, and everything like that. Please check out Depeche Mode for Dungeons. Music is amazing. Music is wonderful. I It's essential in kink. Okay, Sunshine says, do you agree that you could be a mommy dom to subs who aren't littles slash middles? I have tons of subs that don't identify as littles or middles. I have I have subs that don't dabble in ADBL at all, but they still want the mommy dom. And that's that's totally cool. Mommies are for everyone. Everybody needs a mommy. Yeah. One of the things that um, struck a nerve with me with the whole sissification in mommy dom is the control of the quote unquote mommy dob have over the sub. So the sub is dressed in lingerie, lock, locked in chastity and is finally unlocked by the mommy. And then I guess the, the vulnerability of it, you know, the sentiment of vulnerability really resonates with a lot of people. And sunshine says, mommies are for everyone. I like that. That's true. All right, let's get it. Let's continue. <laughs> All right, what makes a good event? Platforms. Platforms. Now I'm talking about the shoes. I'm talking about talking, people leaving. Twitter's now X. You know, OnlyFans has its controversies. Eros has its controversies. Yeah. I got kicked off of Facebook. I wrote a book called The Coolest Way to Kill Yourself. Of course, that's going to get me kicked off. Of <laughs> but uh, it's, you know, um, but people, sex workers specifically, they're after us. They're after the platform us. twice. And it wasn't Tell us about it. it wasn't because of anything I posted. It was uh there's not a lot of community in the online sex working world today, like there is in the BDSM world or the king community, where you go and you you see other sex workers face to face. Um so I've, I've, I've learned online to just keep to myself and post what's within the community standards. And if people want to see the nitty gritty, they're going to need to go to my campsite and look at the 18 and up paid sites. Right on. Yeah, right on. Humiliation. Uh, my next question is humiliation. Uh, we talked about PD asks, what are some of the most humiliating things you have done to a slave slash sl sub? Goddess. Mockery. I like to sing songs about how I'm mocking them and I'll put their names in it. <laughs> Can you give us an example of that? Oh, yeah. Like uh, sometimes I'll put piss baby in a rubber diaper and I'll be like, you can't pee. You're not allowed to pee. Piss baby, piss baby, gonna piss his pants. And I'll just go on like that for an hour. <laughs> okay, let's talk so about The whole that. while just like feeding him more and more water. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Let's talk about diapers, cloth or nylon or vine or whatever. 
disposable? What's your preference? Disposable. If, if, if there's a number two, every time, every time, um, it's just a little bit easier on the laundry machine. <laughs> Plus they come in cute designs. All those cute little stickers and faces that they got on them, those are adorable. And I really like how the the plastic ones will give you the line when they've been soiled. I think that's genius. Yeah. Because sometimes I've got some really sneaky subs that won't tell me. <laughs> now, every, everyone gets something out of the king, you know, gets something out of it for themselves, so to speak. This power exchange, um, like I said, sissies. And even the adult babies, there's a lot of effort that comes in. Just clothing alone is expensive, yeah. right? There's clothing, makeup, all that stuff, all that effort. So a lot of it's on attention and me and stuff like that, needy. So back to the question, you know, that original statement that I was talking about. But what do you get out of it personally? What do you personally? Everyone gets at something different from it. But what do you get? Out of it? I'm healing my mother wound at the same time as I'm healing their mother wounds. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good way to look at it. It's a very healthy way to look at it, too. All right. All right. Now, okay, we got some more questions. Pegging. Kate West question. Why are why are men so obsessed with their own asshole? Because that's where their G-spot is, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Uh, okay, do you prefer... Um, all right, ultimate kinky fantasy. All right, let's say. You have endless resources. You can go anywhere in the world with anybody you want. You could be as elaborate as possible or as quaint and subtle as possible. You do anything, anything at all. It could take a long time. It could be right now. It doesn't matter. Let your imagination go wild. What is your ultimate kinky fantasy? That's a loaded question. Yeah, the king community oh. is full of dreamers. That's why I asked <laughs> Mm, I don't know. I get I get a lot of my fantasies fulfilled. <laughs> um, that goes to my next question. Oh, a yacht, a yacht with like my five most loyal slaves, and I can get studs and stallions flown in on a helicopter as needed for like a month long voyage of just hedonism. That would be really nice. I could go for that right about now. <laughs> yeah, I can go for that. I'll be, I'll be. Let me try to set that up. All right, internet, let's get make this happen. <laughs> now, <laughs> you said it's a loaded question, and you said that you uh, fulfilled a lot of your fantasies. I have too. And one thing that's beautiful about the community and kink is that not only it kind of feeds those fantasies, but it gives you access to it. The rabbit hole goes deep. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm into things that I never thought I'd be into. So what are you kind of, what's piquing your interest now that you kind of want to experience with that you don't have? Someone walked past me at Kink Fest with full SWAT gear on and my pussy went meow. So um, that's something I need to look into. <laughs> Get swatted. <laughs> The whole new term. It's swatted. It's a new. It's a new kink. All right. All right. Where are we? Um, Ultimate kink fantasy. We did that. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Could you be the SWAT? The SWAT team, like a SWAT team. Oh yeah. Band? Oh yeah. I could be the SWAT team. Are you kidding me? I'm so loud when I want to be, and I've already you have, like, got the chassis devices. You have like chassis devices on your belt. You're just like ready, like grenades. <laughs> Quick you just like you toss them and they just <laughs> automatically go on the penises. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> Stan Vladimir asks, which actor would you like to have as a sub? And which <laughs> actress would you like to have as a dom partner? Oh, don't be disappointed. If we're talking like Hollywood actors, could not tell you. I don't know their names. Like respect to them for what they do, but they don't pay my bills. Oh, yeah. Okay. But let's say not just maybe take out actor, anybody, anybody famous that you'd, you'd think that like, I'd like to do a scene with them.
I want to put Donald Trump in chastity and force him to read all the allegations against him while his mother and grandmother look on um, and just watch. That would be really good. Yeah, that would that would be good. I think that these these fantasy these rabbit hole fantasy things they they're getting good in these episodes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Daisy. This is good. All right, all right. Rapid fire recommendations, and they don't have to be kink related. Okay. Okay. The first thing but that comes to mind. Be. All right. Recommend a film. The platform. Okay. Recommend a book. The body keeps the score. Who's that by? Don't ask me to say his name. The body keeps the score. The movie's the, the platform. The score. A very German name I cannot pronounce. <laughs> Reco recommend a song. A song. Oh, so many songs. Um, come back to that. <laughs> All right. Recommend a television show. Oh, I don't watch TV. <laughs> My porn. <laughs> okay. All right. No, that counts. All right. <laughs> recommend a recommend a meal. A meal. Chicken piccata. Lemon chicken piccata. Oh, nice. And, and recommend a song. Oh, there's this one Melanie Martinez song that's really, really good for ABDL, the whole album that she made. Uh, I think it's called Cry Baby. Yeah, Cry Baby. Okay. I played that in the background while tormenting a sub last week. <laughs> okay, I, this is a new game that we have. It's called Underrated Overrated. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna say a kink or a fetish, and this is a personal thing. It's not the be all. You're not representing the kink community. This is just your own no, personal. No, my opinions only represent myself. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, there's no. Just be comfortable with that. Uh, okay. Um. So you say if, whether it's overrated or underrated and why. Okay? okay. All right. French made outfits. Overrated. Why? Everybody does them. Okay. Face slapping. Overrated. I'm not a fan. Scarification. Underrated. We need more of it. All right. Garter belts. Underrated. They're they're just Casting so tasteful. Device. Yes. Chastity device. They are. Underrated. More men in chastity. Spike <laughs> chastity devices. Underrated. You don't see them enough. <laughs> I'm glad you don't see them enough. Oh, speaking, <laughs> of, <laughs> speaking of chastity, get 50% off locked and lost the products from YKF. If you use the, well, use the code YKF, 50% off. Um, all right, back to rapid fire recommendations. The 50s housewife dynamic. Overrated. Because everybody wants a 1950s housewife, but they're not ready to be a provider. You think those 1950s housewives paid bills? No. <laughs> no. No. They got allowances. <laughs> yeah. Um, they didn't pay bills. They popped pills. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, <laughs> All right. Religious play. Mm, underrated. Why? Because it's it's not all that taboo, but it keeps getting banned from platforms. I thought we had freedom of expression here. Right. I should be able to fuck myself with a crucifix dildo if I want to. You should. You should. I stand by that. I had a show with Kate West and Nick, Nico Noir called Sunday Serve Us, and it had nothing to do with religion, but it was called, it was on yeah. Sundays. And it was, a, it, was, it was chaos. It was great. It's out there. Not really. No, it, we took it all off. But, um, but we, it was out there. And the religious, the, the feedback we got, just because it, we used Sunday service as like a tongue-in-cheek joke, the feedback is wild. So, yeah, the religious play, uh, it's, it's a headache. It can, be. <laughs> it can be. But it's also very kinky and fun sometimes, definitely. Um, okay. We let's go more piss play. Underrated, underrated overrated. Why? Underrated. Everybody everybody loves piss. If you say that you don't, 
I mean, some people genuinely. But I think everybody should dabble in piss play. It's one of the more mild fetishes. You could literally just go wash it off if you're done. And also, uh, it's not something I like love, love or anything like that. But it's it doesn't gross me out at all. It's part of the body. I'm putting my face <laughs> when I go down on a woman. Like it's it's there. Like it's urine's a part of life. It's just it's just part of it. Just deal with it. <laughs> What's the passion of marking someone? Very yes. Yeah, you look at it on that level. Yes, take it to the la that level. The passion of marking someone. The submissive. You claim to be submissive. Well, be submissive and drink Daisy Chain's piss. <laughs> That's what you got to do. Acts of submission. Without a doubt. Let's see what we got in the chat. PD, have you ever tried scat play, goddess? What do you feel about it? That was my final. We reached the end. Scat. Underrated or overrated? I can't say either under or over. Scat is a hard limit for me personally. Uh, I was a lifestyle submissive before I became a dominatrix. So I like to say that I won't make my submissives do anything that I haven't done. And I've done quite a lot. What I will do, however, is I will freeze a candy bar and stick it up there and they can eat it out. And that's usually enough for both of us. Yeah, that's enough for both of us. <laughs> for me too. Scat candy bars. I'm gonna add that to the summary. Um, all right, we got some more underrated, overrated, I guess. School uniforms. I think underrated, overrated. Over, overrated. Latex and bizarre, overrated. Underrated. We need more latex. Underrated. Let's talk about latex. And please show us your beautiful. This is this is my vinyl dress. Let me take this, take the robe off. I like to call this my Marilyn Monroe dress because if the wind blows, I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, I, I find it funny that you know the deeper you get into the kink community and, and BDSM culture and just sex work and stuff like that, the the texture, especially the texture of vinyl, is transformative. Almost. Yes. Um, how would you describe display. this? The sound oh. that it makes piddling off of the fabric. It's amazing. The sound of piss piddling off the fabric. Yes. What What else do you like about vinyl and and clothing like that? Like, what does it bring like out of you? What do you say? I like how it almost make, it takes me to like a Madonna place. I guess, like, I feel like, I feel like Madonna might have felt the first time she watched her like a virgin video. And I'm like, oh, rediscovering my sexuality all over again, as if I ever put it down. But. <laughs> all right, we got some more underrated, overrated. Diaper play, overrated, underrated. Underrated. There's a lot you can do with a diaper. Leather is best, both casual and BDSM. So leather, overrated, underrated? Mm, underrated, because leather can be very, very versatile. Now, medical play. Stan Vladimir asks, medical play, overrated? Underrated. Why? Why is it underrated? Because everybody has experience with medical. We all get health care at some point in time. And I, I truly believe that everyone has just a little bit of medical trauma, whether it was a nurse that was really mean to you or a surgery you were really scared about or maybe a new medication you had to start. We all have that experience of some sort of medical trauma. Rogue three chimes in and says medical is clearly underrated stan vladimir asks abduction play overrated underrated i freaking love abduction play <laughs> you got so excited for those who were just listening oh my god the hands she clapped and she jumped up on her seat and i was like i got excited I'm like wow I, okay please, please okay McCain, so please the last the last abduction i did in person um it was me and my ex-girlfriend and this guy wrote out a whole contract he's like i want you to come get me from work from work, okay, but I need I need 
several consent forms, liability waivers, you name it. So <clears throat> we go and I'm wearing my latex thigh high boots and like a black leather dress. And my girlfriend's in hoochie mama shorts and matching pink latex boots. And we go into this guy's work gym and we pull him off a treadmill. We pull him off a treadmill. We shove him in the back of the car, disorient him. And we drive around for like 30 minutes. So he doesn't know where he's at. <laughs> and then we took him back to the dungeon and gave him the time of his life. He loved it. He was like, where do I leave a review? This was great. <laughs> that reminds me. I want to be abducted again. All right, Gary, one, two, three, says ball busting. Underrated. 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 We Why? love ball busting. Why? Because it's so accessible. You could ball bust with your hand, your feet. You don't need any extra tools. However, you, you can get creative with the tools. Foot worship. Foot worship. Underrated. More foot massages 2024. They're just like talking. Right, just like phone sex, there's an art to foot massage. There's an art to massage, but if when you're limited to the foot, you know it. it it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I get it. I get it. Female doctor, but not dressed in white, dressed as a businesswoman. I'm okay. Row three is that's, that's is, how you see it, most doctors. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember the last time I saw a lab coat at the doctor's office. Stan Vladimir has a very important question, which I was going to ask. He read my mind. How do you do an abduction play where it's safe in public and won't get into trouble? Negotiation. You have to negotiate. It also helped that uh, the, the gentleman that we abducted, his buddies that were at the gym with him, knew what was going on, and his boss wasn't there to watch the cameras. <laughs> that does help. That does help. <laughs> Rogue three asks, was foot fetish the beginning of most submissives? Um, I can't is it is it a gateway fetish? Them. Is it a gate? Yeah, yeah, it's a gateway fetish. Yeah, no, licking feet is the precursor to coming on feet is the precursor to getting fisted with a foot. Yeah, <laughs> that's a slippery slope. Yeah, it definitely is. Okay, we got another one. They're gonna keep on going. Spit play. Underrated or overrated? Overrated. Everybody spits. Yeah. Just like everybody pees. Yeah. yeah it's part <laughs> of life. It's part, you know, it, and then I'm getting to the, like the kink hole even goes deeper when you have the attitude. Oh, it's just part of the culture. <laughs> it's just part of, you know. Right. Oh, it's <laughs> oh, it's, you know. All right. Let's, uh, we're going to kind of wind down with the last couple questions, but um, the reason I'm doing this show or the reason I continue to do the show is because it's helpful. It helped save my life. All through the liver transplant, it was talking with people, knowing that there's people out there still kinky, gave me hope. And there are other people I get, you know? Um, so how would you say kink helped you or even go to the point of saying it saved your life or at least changed your life? For no, kink did save my life. Kink absolutely saved my life. Uh, like I told you, I was involved heavily in the rave scene. And at this point in time, I was a submissive with a not so good dom. And I was a drug addict. Hi, I'm Daisy Chains, and I'm a recovered drug addict. I saved myself through sex. <laughs> I teamed up with uh, a bunch of people that had a leather house. And I'm no longer with them as they have moved. But that was the first place where I was invited to a sober party. They had mocktails instead of cocktails. And nobody yeah. was nobody was blowing lines off of anybody else. Because it was going to be a dungeon party. It was, well, everybody's got to give consent. So that was the first experience I had, really, of a sober celebration as an adult. And it really taught me a lot about myself. You know, oh, I don't need these substances to have a good time. I want to. I do want to talk about the rave scene. There's a couple underrated, overrated starvation play. Overrated, underrated. Overrated. In Spain, Roke Three says in Spain, we say that since ball busting was invented, nobody is stronger than anybody. I okay. love that. And Stan Vladimir, thank you, Roke Three, and Stan Vladimir. Have you ever had a bad experience with other doms or subs? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Don't lie to your dom and don't lie to your sub. If you're not experienced with something, don't tell them that you are because people could get hurt. Yeah, that should go on. To, I have a cardinal rule. Um, never waste the dom's time. Um, it should go without saying. It seems like common sense, but should be stated. Just like never lie to a dom. It's another, <laughs> it's another rule. Especially because yeah. we're just going to find out and you yeah. won't get the punishment that you want. <laughs> that is that is definitely true. All right, let's talk about the rave scene real quick. What um, One thing that fascinates me about the kink scene and events and stuff is my experience with the rave scene is that kind of majestic moment that I had, right? Um, fueled by ecstasy, sure, okay. But still, it was a majestic moment nonetheless, right? <laughs> Where with people were together, weird people were together, people expressing themselves, you know? It's it was this exciting, youthful yeah. energy. Even It was a youthful energy even in the older people, you know what I mean? Um, and I find that in the kink community. How would you feel that the rave scene and the kink community are similar, and how are they different? They're similar in the sense that you'll always find the kinksters at the raves, <laughs> but you won't always find the ravers in the dungeons. <laughs> That's true. Very well said. Oh, that was good. That was so good. Okay. Um, and a lot of this show is about communication, helping each other. So um, how can how can kinky people out there help each other? I mean, there are big, massive ways to do it with money, but some people don't have money. You know, um, what are some ways kinky people could help other people other kinky people first things first support your local sex worker if you cannot support them locally share their posts love their stuff comment on it interact uh, get yourselves on a social media network like fetlife check out the calendar of events in your local area there might be munches classes that you can take hosted by other doms and dominatrixes there's lots of ways to involve yourself either in your local community or if you're not comfortable with that, the nearest metropolitan area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get to get to a metropolitan area. And uh, finally, Daisy, we've experienced a lot in life. We've experienced many fetishes. We have people, all these different things. And we're still going on this path. You know what I mean? Where do you want this path to take you? I used to want to heal myself, but I feel like healing is no longer my purpose. Joy is. So I, I want to just continue bringing orgasm rates up and STD rates down, Nick. That's all I want. I stand by you, Daisy Chain. <laughs> I stand by <laughs> you in your mission. <laughs> oh, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk with you. I loved every minute of it. How can people support you, your work, your friends? How can people fund you, give you money to support your work and your friends? I have left uh, my master link that's campsite.bio slash hoopsie daisy shy. You can find all of my socials on there to follow me, interact with my posts. You can also find my 18 and up paid subscription sites and porn videos on there. And I am constantly sharing and tagging my friends. So just keep your eyes peeled. Support all of us. Yes. Support. And please support me and your kinky friends. We have a cool crew of people and we're doing it for the love. You say, this is not, we're not dripping in money. We need money. We need a lot of money. So please buy chassis devices at Locked and Lust. Use product code YKF. Trust me, it's a life changing. Get involved in the scene. It, they have more than just chassis devices. It's pretty wonderful. Um, and oh, Daisy, afterwards, I definitely want to talk with you off camera about some stuff that would uh, be great. Please, everybody, go out, support your kinkyfriends.com, subscribe to the channel. There's a Patreon. We're, we have some plans, some interesting stuff. We got a live show coming next week, um, you know, live at the manor which would be fun. Um, and some cool authors and everybody, I don't know, things are coming together. Stay kinky out there, everybody. And the cardinal rule, words to live by. Be cool, be kind, keep an open mind. Take care.